according to my research, um, Donkey, uh, Donkey Kong was released in 1980. It's exciting and it's growing. Grow and excite. exciting. Excitement electronic video games. Welcome to the first installment of what I'm calling the Arcade Archives Are Decadent and Depraved, which if you get that reference, it's kind of funny that I'm filming this the day after the Kentucky Derby. Um, the idea is there's this company called Hamster, and I'll keep saying Hamster a lot, and they've been taking old arcade games and preserving them and putting them on the Switch and the PS4 and maybe the 5, I don't know, who cares. But uh, the thing is, it's a lot of stuff that never left Japan, or it's things that never got preserved because people make like the Game Boy version of Galaga or whatever. So this is like the real version of Galaga, except they didn't do Galaga yet. So who, what am I even, what? Let me just get this over with. Nintendo was formed in 1889, like 1889. They made playing cards, they ran hotels so their boss could fuck around. They eventually made toys and proto Roombas. And then when the 1960s Japanese bowling fad was dead, they replaced the alleys with these like laser light shooting ranges, which is why they leaned into the light gun shit so much in the eighties. And from that, they kind of like rolled into arcade stuff since they were already making like electronic amusements and toys and shit like that. You know, Space Invaders was a huge thing in Japan. I can't overstate that enough, but uh, they were making a Space Invaders clone a couple years too late. And a whole bunch of them were on a boat to America. And while that boat was sailing, they were like, this isn't going to work. Nobody likes this game. So in like an emergency situation, they got Shigeru Miyamoto to make Donkey Kong. And then Donkey Kong was a big fucking deal. When Nintendo decided to do home video game shit, the primary goalpost was something that could play Donkey Kong at home. It was kind of kneecap though, because at that time arcade games were still more advanced than home stuff. That original un kneecapped arcade game was never available widely at home until 2018. Weird, right? I say widely because I guess it was hidden in Donkey Kong 64, but I can't be bothered to acknowledge any of that wax CGI Donkey Kong shit after Donkey Kong 94 on the Game Boy. I just gotta chill realizing there are probably people watching this who are young enough to not know what Donkey Kong is. It's literally the first game starring Mario, when he was still called Jumpman and not Mario, and your goal is to keep climbing and don't die, eventually rescuing Pauline, Mario's girlfriend at the time. The last stage has you leaping over girder pins so you drop the ape on his head. Cool? Cool. So what was the NES game missing? One thing is these interstitials with DK and either a caption that says, how high can you get or how high can you try? The more significant thing is the Pie Factory stage is back. Whoa. Thanks to a company called Hamster, original arcade Donkey Kong will kick the shit out of you. You actually get the choice of three different versions of the game, or caravan mode. That's probably three modes too many. The very first Japanese version has this thing where you can hop next to something and still get points. They fixed that glitch in the next revision. Then in the American version, made the levels more inaccessible. Meaning, instead of going through all four in order, it's one, then four, then one, then three, then four, then all four in order. Not sure that you'll see that though, because this is a pain in the ass. Doesn't mean you won't have fun trying. Lastly, this is flip grip compatible, like games like this should be. Um, I probably said this before, but the ColecoVision Donkey Kong is the very, very first video game I ever played in my life ever, like ever, ever. And so uh, I probably like have it absorbed by osmosis, so I apologize if I sound like I was just getting this over with. Anyway, um, Skyskipper was another arcade failure from Nintendo. Funnily enough, um, Donkey Kong was originally supposed to be full of Popeye characters, but they got the rights refused, and by the time they gave up on Skyskipper, Donkey Kong was successful enough that the Popeye people had changed their minds. So Popeye was the game they swapped Skyskipper out for. Sort of like how Radar Scope, the Space Invaders clone I was talking about, got dumped for Donkey Kong. Insecure much? What's wrong with Skyskipper? Not too much, but it's a little complicated. I mean, the reason isn't complicated, the game itself is fairly complex. It's a little bit too left brain and right brain simultaneously, 
It plays like a combination of air rescue and shoplifter. These elaborate apes are hovering over their prisoners, as well as far less elaborate landscapes. For real, it's kind of jarring how blocky everything but the character sprites are. There's probably some clever coding reason for why they did that, but I doubt we'll ever know it. Anyway, you bomb these apes, at which point the prisoners do this trampoline thing till the ape wakes up or you rescue them midair. Rescue everyone, and that's that. You have the option of landing once to refuel if you're taking too much time. Prisoners have different card suits on them, and getting several of the same suit gives you more points, or alternatively, multiples of the same color give you less points. That's the snag. It's a bit much to keep an eye on the headphone-wearing apes and be picky about who you pick up when. That said, it's a pretty fun game, and it's incredibly lucky that we're able to play it today. Sky Skipper was supposedly never released in America. Somehow the game had been ripped for use in MAME, but no versions of the game seemed to exist outside of Japan, aside from a Popeye board in Sweden. It was identified as having been Sky Skipper once before, but attempts to convert it back into Sky Skipper weren't fruitful. However, a Nintendo collector named Alex Crowley stumbled across a Popeye board in a former arcade operator's warehouse. The board was stamped with the serial code TNX01, the serial code for Sky Skipper, not Popeye. Between that board and the Swedish one, Alex's friend Mark Whiting was able to reverse engineer Sky Skipper after three arduous months with the help of the MAME code. Pretty miraculous. Alex wanted to recreate the original cabinet but had few resources to work from. None other than Billy Mitchell had a lead on an American version of the game, because he had played it. After pulling some strings, another collector, Whitney Roberts, was given an invitation to Nintendo of America to spend two hours scanning and photographing the living hell out of Skyskipper serial number 0001. It's incredibly unusual that Nintendo would let someone do something like that, but wildly enough they were into it. A little while thereafter, the built from the ground up Skyskipper number 0014 was revealed to a crowd of UK collectors. Hopefully this story doesn't fade away, because without the efforts of these collectors, I doubt the game would have ended up on the Switch. But anyway, um, part of me thinks there's like a lifer somewhere at Nintendo of America who like was a hardcore fan of Skyskipper and let things slip through, because that's just really, really weird. Uh, it seems like something where the worst case scenario is nothing horrible happens, whereas if they would have put Virtual Boy games on the 3DS, you bring a lot of attention to this thing they fucking shit the bed on, you know what I mean? Um, it's kind of tough to figure out what Nintendo is thinking at any given moment because they don't really think. It's funny because like the arcade archives are sort of a thing coming out during a period where we're like uh, cognizant of archiving video game stuff. So it's kind of nice that they're available, but it, it's kind of funny that, like, if, you know, Apple were to buy Nintendo, they'd probably just put all these games onto the App Store where they'd be unavailable after two years. But that's never going to happen because uh, Apple can't fart their way out of a crowded elevator. Anyway, the whole story about Skyskipper is summed up at ArcadeBlogger.com, and there's going to be links in the description below. And as far, as far as the uh, the, the boilerplate shit goes, somewhere near the description below should be a subscribe button, and it should be gray, but if it's not, figure out a way to make that happen, um, and I'll be grateful. I almost used air quotes on grateful, which would have made me look like a fucking asshole. Uh, so I'm going to be doing more of this arcade archive stuff from here on out, and I promise it's going to get weirder than this. And... Uh, unlike some of the Master System garbage or... What the fuck else do I do? Oh, the cyberpunk stuff. Yeah. This is something you can kind of follow along with. Because, like, these games are like seven or eight bucks each. And uh, so the uh, as much as I hate YouTube comments, it's almost like you can have, like, a conversation with other people about whether or not these games are worth a shit or not. I think after, like, the... The joke I made in the Degeneration episode between that and the fact that I'm in an armchair, I think my transformation to Joe jo jo Bob Briggs is complete. I almost called him Jojo jo Bob Briggs. Listen, like, the, um, usually this show is fueled, this channel is fueled by Long Island slushies, but they were, that machine was empty, so I had to get Bell's Two Hearted, which is, um, Pale Ale just makes me dumber.
I have a pop filter now. I feel kind of invincible. As long as my forearm doesn't keep hitting this. Also, I know this is like a stupid like T-girl inside baseball thing, but I have to go back and listen to the wave files to this stuff as soon as I record it because Audacity has the Audacity score one for me to like occasionally have dropouts even though i've got like a fucking solid state drive and more ram than this particular model of macbook is allowed to have but it's funny how many sentences i end with like a question or like <laughs> not a question but like hamburger cheeseburger spaghetti and meatballs um My brain just kind of stopped, but I can use this seg like I can use this section to like put up the end cards.